Hi, this is Joy Corcoran. Um, I am a storyteller and I've been telling stories most of my life. People sometimes ask me what is a storyteller and um, it's, it's, it's kind of the ability to be able to take a, a little fragment of your life and turn it into something that you would tell at a party to get lots of attention. It's kind of like gossip on steroids. You know, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee in the South and I'm sorry to say but Everybody there is a storyteller. I started telling stories the first time I got in trouble and had to make something up to get out of trouble. But uh, there's a lot of life that, that can bring stories that are, that are funny, that can talk about your relationship to your family or your relationship to your community. Um, my community changed a lot as, as I was growing up and as my children were growing up. We lived in a neighborhood that went from being mostly white to mostly black and then to integrated. And then as uh, the more Hispanic families moved in, it changed yet again. And uh, I can tell you that, and that sounds very interesting, yes. The neighborhoods changed, the country's changing, the population is now diverse. However, to tell you a story, what I'd like to tell you is about my daughter's 15th birthday party. About two years earlier, our first Cuban family had moved into the neighborhood. And um, my daughter at the time was like this little sponge for culture and language. And before we knew it, she had learned how to speak Spanish and she was spending more time with them than she was with us. And she had become the neighborhood translator for the Cuban family, Roberto and Dinero Costa and their 20 or so uh, close relatives. Um, the neighborhood had a little bit of a problem with them because they had big parties and they had this big extended family and they liked to have fiestas and they were really happy about owning their first home and they made a lot of noise with music that we weren't familiar with and uh, she helped kind of soften that, um, that problem and they adored her. And so when she turned 15, they wanted to give her a quinceanera, which is the 15th birthday party for a girl that sort of introduces her to the world and womanhood and fancy dresses and all this. Now, we decided that we would have the party at our house and they would do the cooking at, at their house because the cooking usually involved um, roasting a whole pig, which they got the night before and brought it in live and then, you know, did what it takes to do to turn a pig into barbecue. And uh, a lot of the neighbors didn't like that either. They had built a big fence around their backyard so no one would have to see what was actually going on and yet people were disturbed by it. So we were, we were trying to soften that a little bit. Um, the morning of the party, there was a knock on our door at about 6.30 in the morning and it was Miss Lillian and she said, your dinner escaped. We looked out the door and there was this enormous pig about the size of a St. Bernard running around the neighborhood, rooting in the lawns and gardens and just having the time of its life. Um, the neighbors in my neighborhood really liked their gardens and their lawns and uh, it was quite uh, bad politics for them to be out there with a the pig running it, it was not good. So we, you know, we went across the street immediately to try to get Roberto to, to rein in the pig and Miss Lillian scolded us. Well, they're not there, I went there first. And so we called up neighbors and we all got out there to try to catch this pig and we had no idea how to do it. And so um, we you know, tried to leap on it and of course it would try to bite us. You know, pigs bite, oh my God. So um, we decided that wasn't a good idea. So what we would do was herd it. If we could just herd it toward Roberto's house and kind of wait around it till he got there, then you know maybe all would work out well. Well, the pig who was on death row did not care. So he just wouldn't be herded. We tried to herd it one way and it'd snarl and go another way. And every once in a while it liked to turn around and run through the group of us and knock one of us over to get to another yard. Um, and it had just done that uh, and had gone straight closer to Roberto's house, but into Miss Lillian's house and was headed for her prize geraniums. Well, Miss Lillian cussed out loud and threatened to get her gun. About that time, Roberto's family drove up in their pickup truck filled with groceries and men and 
Roberto was in the, in the bed of the truck and he stood up and surveyed the situation and got a, this huge grin on his face. And we expected everybody in the truck to come and try to catch this pig. And it was just Roberto. He kind of loped across the yard, quietly snuck up behind the pig and grabbed it by its back legs. And so the pig was up wheelbarrow style on its front legs and it started pushing around to try to, try to bite Roberto, but it couldn't really do anything because he had it pretty firmly by the back legs. And he started walking at home on its front legs and saying things to his relatives and they were all laughing. And so I asked my daughter what he said and she just grinned and said, it's not translatable, mom. And that was the last we ever saw of the pig until about eight o'clock that evening when it arrived on our doorstep on a spit surrounded by Hispanic people with wonderful food and all the neighbors came over and Miss Lillian was the first one in line to have her bite of barbecue.